Hey everyone, Nick Dierberts here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about imports in Python and installing Python packages. This is part of our lecture segment on exploring the parameter space with sensitivity analysis and the sub segment on additional Python basics that we need to be able to attack sensitivity analysis in Python. So we're here in this extra Python basic section of the sensitivity analysis lecture, starting here with understanding imports in Python. So we've already used the import statement a little bit. We've imported NumPy, we've imported Pandas. Um, and what that import is doing, it is loading this external package, which we can then use. Um, and that makes it sound and seem like these third-party packages, NumPy, Pandas, and all the others that we can potentially use, makes them sound like they're some kind of, uh, you know, very structured, special things um, that you need to set it up in some really special way. Um, but it's quite a bit simpler than that. Really, it's they're just sets of Python code and just a bunch of files. And when you import it, it's just loading the Python code in those files into your notebook or wherever you're working. Um, and so just like the authors of NumPy and Pandas have written all these Python files with functions and classes that you can use, you can also write your own code and put them in Python files and import your code from Python files in the same exact way. So the way that that works is you say import something. What happens is Python searches on your computer in certain spots to see if it can find uh, something.py. .py is a Python file. It's a plain text file with a .py extension. And so it's first, it has a certain order that it goes and searches your computer in. And the first place it's going to look is in your current folder. Um, so if you have right next to your Jupyter Notebook, you have a something.py defined there, and it has some functions or classes in there. When you import something, it's going to bring in the code from that something.py file. And then if it can't find any something there, then it's going to go on and continue looking through the different locations that it has set up to search. And beyond your current directory, the main other locations are going to be uh, a certain spot where it installs all your packages. Um, and there's often a couple different spots that it can put the packages. So those will be multiple different spots that it looks in in order. So when you install a package, it'll put it in this special spot. So when you import, then if you don't have a file defined with that name, it'll go look where your packages are and then be able to import it from there. So that is something to be mindful of because it does always look in the current directory first. If you actually created a numpy.py file in the current directory, then when you import numpy, you're no longer getting the numpy package. You're getting your numpy.py file um, and so that is something to be careful about, that you don't want to define Python files uh, with the same names as packages that you might be meaning to import. It could definitely cause a conflict. So you can write your own custom code, and you can then import it into your notebook later on. So if you have any functions or classes that you create as, as you're building out your models and you say, hey, that's actually a pretty generally useful thing that I just built, I'm probably going to want to use that in my next model, not just this model, then you can take that function or take that class and you can offload it into the separate Python file. And then no matter how many notebooks you have, you can just keep importing that same function or class in your notebook and then say that you wanted to add a new feature to that function. It now gets a new default, a new argument. Um, 
and it can do additional things now. Um, you make that change in one spot in your Python file, and that will carry through to all your notebooks that are using it. So it goes even further in this code reuse direction to keep from having to repeat yourself. So um, what happens when you import a file is it executes everything in that file. So you can think of, you know, like executing a code cell in Jupyter. You can think of your Python file as being the contents of one code cell and importing that file is the same as running that code cell. Um, so generally, all that you want to have in there, for the most part, is going to be function and class definitions. You don't want to generally be doing anything. Uh, you just want the setup, the definitions, so that you can do something with those functions and classes. Um, because uh, weird things can happen if you you know, are importing something multiple times and you're expecting it to do something. Python only imports it once and then it, it caches it so it doesn't have to keep importing it. So uh, you could run into unexpected behavior if you're trying to run logic when you import. Instead, just have functions and classes for the most part. And then, um, then when you import it, you'll have all those defines so that you, so that you can use them in your notebook. And, you know, it's a little bit more advanced to go to this structure than just having everything all in one Jupyter Notebook, of course. But it is a more maintainable structure as you go to build larger and more complex models and as you go to build uh, more and more different models where you might want to share code across your different models. Um, so it's a good thing to learn about. You might not have to go there in this class. Um, as we get further in the course, the fourth project in the course is the DCF model, and the third project is a WAC model, which the WAC is part of the DCF model. And so I have seen students take their functions from the WAC model and refactor them out into these separate Python files and then use them in their DCF model so they don't have to like rewrite all the WAC parts of the model. So that's definitely a good application for this within this class. Um, but I'm mainly mentioning it here just so one that you understand what imports are and that they're not anything really special. It's just running the contents of some file which has Python code in it. Um, and that's so also you can know about this as a way to grow into as you start to go and continue to apply this stuff out of the course and maybe you find your Jupyter notebooks to be getting really long and, and unwieldy. Um, or maybe it's even just that you have a lot of code in your Jupyter notebook and you really want it more focused on just the results and not showing so much code to the reader of the model. Uh, for all these different use cases, going to offloading your code into separate Python files is a good solution. So, um, as we mentioned, these, these packages that you can install, all they are are just plain Python files that define functions and classes, just like we've already learned how to do. Um, and going along with this course, I had you install Anaconda for your Python distribution. And that's because it comes with around 200 packages already pre-installed, and it's most of the common ones that we would wanna use. So most of the time, you don't need to install the package. You already have it installed from Anaconda. But there's around 200 in Anaconda, and there's around 250,000 packages out there that you could potentially use. Huge number of packages. And this is one of those things that makes Python so great. There's a package out there for everything that you could want to do, essentially. Um, it'll make your life so much easier just finding the correct package to work with instead of having to recreate everything yourself. So you find this package, you Googled about it, you landed on some GitHub page or PyPI page or something explaining what this package is. Now you say, I wanna use this, what's the next step? So um, the way to do this is with pip. Pip is the Python package installer. Um, and it's very simple, it's just pip install and then the name of the package and that installs the package for you. 
Now, where do you run this? That happens in the terminal. So that uh, Anaconda prompt would be a good place to run that. Uh, but Jupyter does actually have a shortcut where you can run terminal commands instead of just Python code. And you do that by just putting an exclamation mark before whatever you're running in the cell. And that says, hey, Jupyter, I'm trying to run something in a terminal, not in as Python code. Um, and so that would be exclamation mark, pip install, and then the name of the package to install it from Jupyter. And you only need to install a package once. Once you install it, you have it on your computer for as long as you have Python installed. Um, the only time that you might want to run this again is uh, to upgrade the package. You can add an upgrade flag into that. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the course when we need to use that. Um, but generally, install it once, you have it, and you can just use it. You just have to import it in each session, but then you can keep using it just like we have been using NumPy or Pandas or anything you have already installed. Um, so let's look at a quick example of that. So let's jump over to the Jupyter Notebook. And this is the same one with all the other additional basics, dictionaries, list comprehensions. Here we're on to... Um, imports and installing packages. And so um, the reason that we're getting to installing packages now in the course is because uh, we're going to go and do sensitivity analysis with a purpose-built package, which is made for that purpose. And the reason this is not an anaconda is because I actually wrote this package um, and it doesn't Hasn't gotten popular enough yet to make its way into Anaconda. It's got a long way to go till it gets there, maybe someday. Uh, but until then, we're going to have to just install it manually uh, to be able to use it. So that's uh, what we have here is pip install. Sensitivity is the name of the package. I was amazed that this name was available for me to take. Uh, it was the perfect name of the package. Um, and all you do is just exclamation mark, pip install, and then the name of the package. So let's go ahead and try to run that. And when you do these exclamation mark commands, uh, it does. It looks like it's doing nothing for a long time, and then it spits out the result all at once when it's done. You don't see it like stream the result as you go. If you're running it in the terminal, you would see all this stuff happen line by line. In Jupyter, it just spits it all out at the end. Um, and so you're gonna see probably a lot of requirement already satisfied. That's fine, just ignore that. Just scroll all the way down to the end. Um, and here it looks like I even, uh, I actually already had the package installed. And so the first one up here was requirement already satisfied sensitivity. Um, but if you uh, pick some other package that you don't have, um, and you should see this for sensitivity when you go to install it. Um, you're going to see at the end successfully installed and then the name of the package and then the version of the package. And then you can start using that package as soon as you want. Um, so with sensitivity, I can go ahead and import sensitivity and then I would be able to use the package. So make sure to run that. Uh, with sensitivity, not this other package, um, and then go ahead and try the import. You should see it just execute and the number change here and nothing else happened. And that means that you have installed it correctly. Um, so that's a quick overview on imports in Python and installing packages. We're going to come back next time to start implementing sensitivity analysis in Python using the sensitivity package. So thanks for listening and see you next time.